Uh-huh. And one of them is like more for outside where it has like gnomes and cute like fairy okay. arches and stuff. And there's like sea shadows. Okay. Maybe we passed it. I know it's somewhere right, right here. I want to follow you. <laughs> 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 Maybe we can go too far. <laughs> <laughs> so many aisles. Okay. And then there's like trees. Oh, nice. And okay. Stuff. And on this side, there's like galaxy, like. Oh, cool. So, this is the miniature stuff I was talking about, and there's another one with like the gnomes and stuff. Okay. Um, but if you're looking for like dolls, I would think that's like. Uh, Okay. Okay, and then where would I find like cardboard, like um, almost like poster paper kind of? Uh, yeah, like really big. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Oh, cute. Oh, okay. This is but good. These right are here. kind of big. Are you looking for bigger? Yeah, no, foam board is good. Uh huh. And I know that you know, like the teacher ones? Yeah. Those I think are in here. Oh, these might be good backdrop type things. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see those. Okay, yeah. yeah. We're getting closer, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Did awesome. I help, like, at all? No, no, it did. It did. Okay, Thank sweet. you. And I have a starting point. What was that all about? I have an ongoing debate with Adonis over the years of really me working so long in retail, including um, big box stores. He has this rule where basically because he wants to be mindful of his time being wasted, when he goes to a store and he's looking for something, the first thing he'll do is to go look for an employee to direct him to where the item is. When I go to the store, I do the opposite. The first thing I do is try all of my resources and common sense to find the item on my own. And then if I cannot find it, I'll reluctantly ask workers for help in finding items, but not with much expectation from them because usually they have no idea where anything is. The reason why I know this is because when I worked in retail shops that have like a variety of items, the workers normally only know what's in their own department. So if you don't ask them questions pertinent to that specific department, there's a higher chance that the employees will have no idea where to take you. That's for one. And then for two, even within their own department, sometimes if it's like an item that isn't a commonly searched for item, they still would not know where that item is. But instead of just telling you that they don't know, which most of the time they don't, they'll lie and act like they know and try to like, look for the item with you then when they find the item based on their own common sense and just guessing they'll they'll try to play it off like because i always knew it was here <laughs> this is where i was bringing you in the first place you know what i'm saying like they'll do that i've seen my coworkers do it many many times when i've been working in retail and 
I hate that. So that's why when I worked retail, I always made sure that I mastered my department and I would learn as much as I could about other departments so that when people would randomly run into me in different parts of the store, I didn't look completely clueless when they asked me for stuff. And at the very least, so as to not waste everybody's time, I would just tell the customer, I'm sorry, I don't work in this department, so I don't know where that is, but I can find you another associate who does know where it is. Do, do you want me to go look for them? And then if they said yes, then I would do that. And if they said, no, it's okay, I'll just go do something else. All right, nobody's time got wasted. That's what I wish people would do, but that was like unusual for workers to do that, I guess. So my customers would always tell me that <laughs> They liked me because I didn't BS them. This was a Hobby Lobby and I was telling Adonis what I was looking for when I went in there and he was like, well, just go ask a worker as soon as you go in there because I haven't been, I haven't shopped at Hobby Lobby in so long. I don't really, ha I'm not familiar with the layout. <laughs> like that's gonna take just as long if I ask someone as it would if I just went and looked for it my damn self. But because I didn't wanna be defiant and just oppose him, I was like, all right, I will. And then I recorded it. And that was the outcome. So I really just did that to prove a point to myself that I'm just being paranoid because, you know, I was pretty unbiased walking into Hobby Lobby since I've, I've never worked at a Hobby Lobby and I don't shop at Hobby Lobby enough to know what their workers are like when you ask them for help because I've never had to ask anyone for help the last times I've gone there. But anyway, yeah, I just thought that it would be funny to include that in this video and get a laugh out of it. You're not alone if you guys are out there shopping and you're getting frustrated with the workers. It's not you, it really is them. They have no idea what's going on. Um, the managers are worse. They usually never know what the hell's going on. Okay, so let's get into this <laughs> video. This is like a weird way to start a video, but whatevs. 안녕하십니까, 여러분. 내 이름 집시예요. 오늘 진짜 재밌는 작품을 같이 할 거예요. Guys, we're going to do something fun today. We're going to make a closet for our dolls, but I don't have time to be crafting it from beginning to end from scratch. So we're gonna do what I like to call my lazy gypsy method of crafting and just kind of do a shortcut version of what I would have done if we were gonna just do it all from scratch, okay? All you need is something like this. It's a little crate that I found at, I think I got this at Walmart, but I'm sure they have the same type of thing at Target. You can order it on Amazon or wherever else they sell household goods. This is something that's supposed to be like a little crate, a little basket that you can stack on top of each other for small supplies. And I just have it basically just sitting on its side. This is the way I want it to face, but you can make yours face any direction you want. You can do it like this if that's better for you and stack them on top of each other. And for our reference, I do have my Poppy Parker doll here, Serafina, and she is just standing next to this crate so you guys can get an idea of how tall it is when it's on its side like this. So you'll need one of those or as many as you would like. And this is really for people who are trying to save space in a smaller area and still be able to keep most of their dolls clothing out so they can access them quickly. I'm gonna be using this shoelace, it's very long, but you can use any kind of cord or a strong rope that you have on standby if you have old shoelaces that you don't need anymore. Also, I have these really cute hangers. Guys, I was about to make a bunch of hangers with wire because I got really tired of doing the uh, pipe cleaner ones. They were just taking a lot of space up, very bulky, and even though they're very easy to make, it just, I need to save space. So I was looking online and I happened to find these on Amazon for only like six bucks. It's like 50 pieces or 60 pieces. I got two of them. And the great thing about them is that you'll see later that the the shapes of all of the hangers are a little bit different. There's like five different shapes in here. So you can hang up more than just regular t-shirts, things with spaghetti straps, dresses, things that have like, you know, halter top type of a tube type kind of a thing, even pants and skirts. So who got time to be sitting around crafting all day long? People got jobs, people got school, people got things to do, okay? So let's do this. All right, so first we're gonna start off with your crate. Now, I chose this crate specifically because it has holes in it, which means I don't have to cut anything. But if your crate or your box does not have holes, then of course you will have to create them however you want to do that. You only need really one row of holes. All these other holes, that's really just for decoration. Don't even need all of that. And I'm gonna take my shoestring and I'm going to insert it through the middle hole here. I don't wanna get too close to the back or too close to the front because 
sometimes when you're hanging things, they take up some space, like the shoulders of the shirts will take up some space. So you want to have some room to have your clothing hanging properly. And then we're gonna basically, we're going to pull the string through one hole to the other side and pull it out. And then you're gonna tie the string closed, okay? Whatever method you use to secure your knot, you do that, you just want it to be very tight because you don't really want this, this rope to give. You don't want it to be like stretching and moving around. All right, so I'm gonna tie this really, really tight over here. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing on this side and tie the knot really, really tight. Remember that you want to pull your string. You want to pull it very tight when you're making your knot. Okay, so this is about as tight as I could get my rope. So to get the best results, don't use something that has elasticity. So this part that's left over, I can actually just cut this off. But I'm going to save this for right now because there's something I think I want to do with it. I'm not sure yet. So I'm just going to leave that alone. But let's pretend I cut it off. At this stage, you're basically done. Like this is it. This is <laughs> tier one in your... Um, in your closet. So this is also a little bit of a review, a real quick one, of these hangers. They're in five different shapes and they come 50 per pack. So I have this little heart-shaped one and we've got this silver one with the bow. Got a purple one with an opening there. Another pink one that's got hooks on the edges and a light pink with dips in the sides they're all hanging just fine on my rope so this one is holding it just fine the dimensions of the hangers are about i want to say about two inches in length across they work very well for barbie clothes and i wanted to hang up the boys clothes specifically they're cut wider than the girls clothes are so i want you to see that they can actually fit on here very well this one has the hooks on the edges that you can use for tank tops. Okay, and these, the heart ones, it looks like there's stops right here that can keep it from sliding off. So you can do shirts and you can do tank tops equally on those. And this works just fine. The ones that look like this that have openings, this one has an opening and this one has a space. You can use those to hang up skirts and pants so I'm gonna take some pants here these are some guys sweatpants and I'm gonna fold them in half and see if I can squeeze them through yeah something like this you can kind of hang your pants up of course your pants have to be able to kind of fold over which you see that more with the girls dresses and skirts so if you don't have a lot of space to hang up dresses and skirts that are very long, this may be a good way for you to do that. That is the last style that I have that have dips here. You can also use this style for tank tops or pants too. Okay, that's how my little closet is looking. And it's not really filled up, but I just want you to see, I turned it this way so that I would have a lot of space here for things to hang. In case I had longer pieces that I didn't want them dragging or like, folding over or something on the bottom make it harder to get them but do you see what I'm saying about how the rope will start to dip down from the weight of the clothes so you want to tie them really really tight if you have hot glue you could even secure it further by gluing the knots on the outside so that they don't move and so that the elasticity doesn't really affect it as much all right but this is what I had on hand you guys so that's why I'm using this for now but I do plan on tweaking this and then doing it with a better type of rope but I just wanted to show you the method it really doesn't matter what you use if you're just in a rush and you don't have time to be doing a whole bunch of crafting. I literally, I literally just did this in like a couple of minutes. What took me the longest is explaining to you guys the different type of hangers that I was gonna put on here. Thanks to my Asperger's, I have to try my best to solve problems in my mind or I can't let anything go. If you want to make your, your rope more tight and more strong, reinforce it by braiding it or by layering more than one piece together so that you can have multiple pieces of rope that will keep it from, you know, dipping down too much. Just make sure as you're doing that, that your hooks for your hanger is still gonna fit because you don't want it to be so thick that you cannot put your hangers on there, obviously. All right, so all I did was I just, I just wrapped the rope around itself. I suggest braiding it first if you know how to braid or like twisting them up together really, really tight. I wanna see how you guys' 
look and what you did like your your variation i want to see what it looks like and how you guys ended up um stacking them or arranging them after you filled it up with your clothes all right i'm back after i have filled everything up for this crate i have two more crates like this that i'm going to do the same thing with and i'll stack them on top of each other i want to show you how how much of a dip I ended up with in the rope after hanging everything up. I do think that if you have more time to spend on this project, it will be a lot better and sturdier if you use a wooden dowel instead of um, thread or string or rope for this project. I just needed a quick fix, so that's why I did it this way. And I wanted to show you guys that even if you don't have a whole bunch of different art supplies, you can kind of substitute with things you have around your house if you just think in doll scale, okay? And you can see that I only have one thing that's dragging on the floor, which are these pair of overalls, and I'm okay with that. I noticed that this pack actually came with one more style of hanger than I thought originally. So it's actually six different types, and this one has little hearts on the edges to stop it from, you know, from stuff from falling off of the... Not all of the hangers are the same width, which is cool for if you have like different sized dolls, like Monster High dolls and Monster High dolls, Rainbow High dolls, Ever After High, they are all different sizes. So their clothing may not be as large as Barbie's clothes. Also, if you have a collection of Kelly Chelsea clothing, the smaller hangers may work very well for you. So I really highly recommend going and looking at them. And they're plastic, but they don't feel very flimsy. Like it's not very weak. You know, they're sturdy. They're sturdy. I don't know why I didn't think to do this sooner because I could have saved myself so much time crafting if I had just bought hangers instead of making them. They're really inexpensive. If you go on Amazon, you can probably find other styles besides the ones that I picked. I picked these because they had different styles of hangers and I just wanted to try them out to see if they would work for different kinds of clothes that I have. But if you know specifically what kind of hanger you need, you can probably get like a 40, 50 pack with just that type. So go ahead and look and see what you can find. And that's that's pretty much everything for this tutorial. It's very simple, very easy, and it doesn't consume a whole lot of time. And if you guys like this, if it's helpful to you, go ahead and like this video. Make sure you leave me a comment letting me know what kind of changes or tweaks you think would be better for this um, design. And like I said, you can stack this on top of each other. And that's another reason why I picked this type of a crate so we can save space. Don't forget to tag me on Instagram if you guys do this yourself and you have your finished product. I wanna see what they look like when you tag me. Please don't just randomly tag me at Broken Dolly TV with no commentary because when we get tagged by so many people on our social media, you guys, and people DM us constantly, which we're okay with, but Sometimes it's like I don't know what they want. I don't know what they're tagging me for and I don't know what I'm supposed to be responding to you and people just take it the wrong way because they think that we're like this and them or something. I don't know. I'm telling you as you're watching this, if you guys are new, I know some people have just discovered our channel even though we're not an, a new channel. But if you did, we have no problem communicating with people. Just be very clear about what it is we're communicating here, okay? So if you tag me, leave me a message saying, hey Gypsy, I wanted you to see this project that I did inspired by this video I saw that you did, whatever. All right, oh, I use the gypsy method on making this thing. Thank you. All right, I wanted to see that, and hopefully I can feature some of those pictures on our upcoming videos, so definitely tag me, you guys. But just be clear, okay? Before I go, speaking of clothing, make sure you check this out. You know my boy Genu is an artist, and he has been working diligently on getting us really cool, unique graphics for ourselves and for our dolls' clothes. So we're working on putting together a shop for you guys to purchase the clothing from where you guys can have really cool graphics on your dolls clothes to match our dolls. But also you can go ahead and jump the gun, go and pick out your favorite graphics on our merch shop right below the screen so that you can rock these designs on your own clothes. And when these designs are produced for the dollies, then you'll already have some matching clothes to take pictures with them. Make sure you tag us in the picture so that we can feature them in our upcoming videos. That's all for today. And if you wanna see how I got Poppy's hair to look like this, then make sure you watch my tutorial on how to make your Barbie doll's hair go from curly to wavy and make it longer. All right, you're watching Broken Dolly TV. There are so many other cool videos on this channel, so go ahead and check them out. 
Don't be lazy. Go through the playlist. You will be entertained for hours and hours and hours. And I'll talk to you later. My name is Gypsy. You're watching Broken Dolly TV. Have a dolly day. I love the ones who know just what they're getting. They come to the flame running, eager to jump in. Unafraid of the torment of the grave. My faith. It's hard to decide between them and the suicides. Either way, they both died. Before saying la illa ha illa law, Muhammadan Rasulullah. I can't deny.